Hallelujah. Thank you for everyone for joining us here at Bible study. Um, I know the Word of God is alive and real. and It's always revealing to us more of God. It's always showing up who really God is. And tonight we're going to learn much more about the Word of God. I hope you go with us with me in this journey and to understand. I just want to encourage you, you know, maybe they're, they're, you're in a season where you feel, you know what, I, I, I'm just far away from the Word of God. It's okay. But the point is not to be far away from God now. Whatever has happened in the past, that, that those circumstances can't keep you putting down. Instead, come back to the Word of God and allow it to encourage you. Allow it to flow in your life to show you who you really are and be able to be the victorious one you are in Christ Jesus. With that, let's pray. Let's believe God. Father, we thank you for your grace, your goodness. Thank you for this opportunity once again so that we can understand and read of your Word to be able to reveal more layers of who you really are to show up in the goodness of our Lord Jesus, to be able to understand everything that you want us to share, Lord, so that we can be everything that you have called us to be. Father, we thank you for our hearing ear and our receiving heart so that we can learn of you and be planting those seeds of those words of God to reveal a harvest that is plentiful and mighty in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you and praise you. Hallelujah. So if you've been with us on this journey, we've been... We've been coming to the point of, uh, we've been looking about redemption. We've been looking about who we really are in Christ Jesus. And in this moment, we, we need to come back to this place to understand that there is a newness. And uh, we talked about this last week. There is actually something new that has been created for the first time in Christ Jesus. See, before that, there's this, this creation never existed. It was not there. We look at a life so much in the physical sense. We miss about that life has actually begun in the spiritual. That life has actually been, been absorbed and kept by the spiritual. And that is why we need to come and open our eyes and, and really understand the Word of God. Because this is the only way our spiritual journey can be understood. That who we really are in Christ is. Who we, what, what I've been called to be. Why I'm here and all the purposes of God. That's the only thing that the Word of God can reveal. It shows your spiritual nature and the journeys that is. It shows, you know, it records history so that you can believe this is what actually happened. It reveals by faith, you know, how everything was created and all these elements are there. A lot of times, these are the very things that the world system is trying to take away. It's trying to take away this idea that, you know what, there is a God in the first place. Or, or, or maybe if there is a God, He's probably not from the Bible. Or if there is a God, I can't believe that because I have been put it down. I've been pressured down throughout all my journeys of, of believing something that is contrary to believing the word of God. And, but the truth is, if we can start viewing the world and understanding that this is the truth instead of what we've just learned. To, to understand that this is the way of truth and we start questioning everything from that point of view, then we'll start to realize the questions that the Bible presents are more real. That the, the, the answers that the Bible presents are more logical. And, and to say that, you know, the first point uh, we, we need to understand, uh, and we'll go to our scriptures first here. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Uh, Romans chapter 8 and, and, uh, and the w word of God reveals in verse 29 and that's what I want to read here verse 28 verse chapter 8 and verse 29 Romans chapter 8 and verse 29 uh, and it says here I read from verse 28 and we know that all things work together for good for those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose verse 29 for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be confirmed to the image of his son. Confirmed to the image of his son. We've, we've talked about this. The idea is to represent absolutely perfectly the same likeness of his son. We have been confirmed to the image, the, to the perfect image of Jesus Christ. That means the same image that he has, that's the same image we have. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. The idea that he might be firstborn among many brethren reveals that there is this generation, there is these people that never existed. 
Because why? It reveals Jesus is a firstborn. Firstborn of what? Firstborn of what generation? What creation? Because we know the firstborn was Adam. We understand, you know, all, all this whole earth lineage has started from Adam. And that's where we belong. So how come Jesus here is being called a firstborn among brethren? That means something new has been created. And something new is happening. And that's what we're going to learn here tonight. Okay? Hallelujah. So a, 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 another one, just to, just to simplify this and show you. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay, uh, this is probably a scripture we've, we've read many times in church. We've, we've gone through this. But I just want you to understand the, the actuality of what it means. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and, and verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone in Christ, that means there is a condition that if you identify yourself in Christ Jesus, this is what happens. He is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You know, we take this, and a lot of times we don't this, take this verse literally. We take this, oh, some of my old has passed away. Uh, some of the old is still here. I've become a little bit new here. I've got to learn to me. No, no, the word of God says you are a new creature. Nothing of the old exists. Uh, if you will look at the life journey of, of a butterfly, uh, you'll understand this. The moment it is birthed, it is birthed as a lava, it becomes a caterpillar. But in order for that caterpillar to become a butterfly, it actually needs to destroy every bit of itself. That means when it goes into that pupa, all of it is melted down actually. All of this come to this place where it becomes, now it, in order for it to become something, it all has to pass away. Nothing of the old remains. So everything, the way it ate, the everything, all of those nature has been defeated, come to, the, come to north. And now something new is being created. And that's how the butterfly comes across because it is an entirely new thing that did not exist in the before. It is called metamorphosis. It is called transformation. That means to be something that not, did not exist before. And that is what actually has happened to us. We have been transformed, created anew. If you will continue to believe that there is something of the old left, you will continue to face those old things in your mind. You will continue to try and be defeated in your mind. And that is not who you really are. You are new in Christ Jesus. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Nothing of the old remains. Nothing of the old can consume you anymore. Unless you keep on revealing yourself and identifying yourself as that old nature. But in truth, you are a new creation. If you will believe so, you can live so. So, uh, 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 so in Christ Jesus, we are a new creation. It's a new spiritual creation because uh, in Adam, there was a creation as well. Adam, when he was made from dust, God breathed into him to create life. Something new was made that did not exist before. Life on, on, in man was made in a way that did not exist before. In the same manner, life in Christ has been made in a way that did not exist before. These two elements, life in Adam and life in Christ, are two entirely separate beings. You need to treat them that way. You need to understand these are not the same. Old is dead. New is alive. And that's what is different is, okay? So, so what happened in Adam? Uh, 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 the whole universe reveals that there is creation. Everything around you reveals that there is a creator. The the world keeps on continuing to feed us with this knowledge that you know what, there is no creator. Actually, uh, we all came from dust particles or, or, or some minute idea of, of a germ that, that made us into these incredibly intelligent and amazingly beautiful humans. And that is not possible. We know, you know, you know we, we try and say this a lot of times. Uh, if you look at this, this phone, if you look at it, we never say this just came to exist to be. We never will say this. You know why? Because we believe this, this, this matter, this, this existence of this, the technology within it reveals that there is actually someone who made time to create it. 
He actually, yeah, it's, there's no such thing as chance to create such a technologically advanced thing. You can't just say, and yet the probability of this happening is far less than what we call the Big Bang to happen. To say, you know what, you put it in a room of people, uh, 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 you've put all the parts in, uh, I, I use this example because I've learned this, um, you put the parts of a plane uh, in, a, in a hangar, you put all of it together, un, uh, unfitted everything, and then suddenly overnight a lightning hits and suddenly the next morning you come and there's a whole plane jointly fit together. The probability of that happening is far less, they, they, I mean, far more greater than even the Big Bang happening in the first place. So how few a logic, even probability, the, the scientific mathematics tell, you know, the idea keeps on revealing to us that there is a creator. Uh, everything around us, look at the flowers, look at everything around you. It keeps on revealing there is this nature of a creator. And, and the longer we deny it, the longer we are trying to suppress the need for our savior. The longer we keep on suppressing our need and understanding of a creator, the longer we will suppress our needs to understand that our need is of a savior, someone to whom presents me. And that is why the devil keeps on trying to feed us this knowledge all the time to say, you know what, does actually God exist? The question today is, does actually God exist? The truth is our every fiber of our being reveals there is surely God. There is surely God. I just cannot come to be. Yet, because we have been so blinded over and over and over by knowledge, this has become a question that people actually ask. Because we've been so blinded and consumed by the nature of the devil, to be consumed by the nature of spiritual death itself, to be consumed to say, you know what, I believe only what I see and instead of trying to understand even what we see, I don't want to put it that way because we can see actually there is a need for a creator. There is actually a being. That, but the idea is that we have been so consumed by this knowledge of what people have said of our lives that we believe everything that has been said is certainly truth. That is not so. The only truth is the Bible. And that is proved over and over and over and over. God's word has never failed. The truth in God's word has never failed. And every time man has tried to, you know, tried, a lot of men have tried, you know what, we're going to disprove the Bible. And they come up saying, you know what, actually I have changed my thought because I know this is truth. And there is so much, so much out there to say, you know, even we look at ourselves, only life can produce life. We, we know that. There is no way something dead can produce life. You know, we talk about this world and, and there's a lot of AI things and, and how we, we can start to think in a manner that is far technologically superior. But it went creating life itself to be creating a life that is actually able to breathe in its own self. The entire creation process of life itself is so, so complicated, so myth meticulously you know it's been so uh, so carefully orchestrated to say that life can only come through life itself that's how beautifully we man you know there, there's so much uh, possibilities within our life itself and the development of it but but to say there is not an intelligent being to say there is not an intelligent creator is to, is to try and hide away our own sin, try and hide away our need for a savior. And that's what it all does. You have to really be put into something else to be so consumed by something else that you cannot actually see that there is you know, creation outside of you. Everything out of creation keeps on crying out, there is a creator. No one can deny it and the stars, everything around us so perfectly balanced is earth itself that, that the whole galaxy around it has been made so that earth's motions, the way earth moves, the way, the, the way we have this night and day, the way we move around the sun, that there is warmth, there is cold, there is coolness. All these things are so, so element set apart so perfectly that there is a revealing. There has to be a creator. So... When we look at creation itself, we can see how beautifully everything has been made, how, how, how brilliantly God's God has set it all up. And the, old, the goal of this creation was it was set up for men. The creation 
the first, you, that's why we talk about the first creation idea came because of men. Not because oh, God created someone beautiful and now he said he needs men. No, no. The whole goal of all of creation, all of these, these methods, the, everything that has been God put out, all the routines, all the seas, the, everything around you, they have been developed with one goal in mind and that is men. And he made it so that he could find this place and he could set it up for man himself. The, the level of attention God has put into detail so that men can enjoy everything. Men can understand everything. Men can, you know, men can actually develop himself. To, to be a place where men can be intelligently understanding and be able to be and act like God himself. He can come to this place where he is, because he's like God, he can understand things like God. God in his wisdom wants to understand things. God in his wisdom wants to always grow. And that is the way he has made man and all this around him. He created curiosity. He created all these elements so that man could enjoy it. Not just on one level. Not just, you know, <clears throat> that's why we said God does not just make food for you. He made everything colorful. He made for the beauty of your eyes. He made things for your brain itself to be asking questions because that is how you become more intelligible. That is how you become more like God. That is how we grow. We don't, we're not created to be stagnant in a way. And, and all of this was thoughtfully made for the first creation of God. And that is Adam. Adam was supposed to be a, the first creation and probably the last creation of God. He was supposed to be the last creation of God and to say that everything God has set up is so perfect for Adam that he would have no need of anything else. And, and this all what it does, it reveals God's infinite love for his creation Adam. He's, his infinite love for the creation of man himself. You know, that is where we, our, our place is in this plan of God. All of it, he, he's not just doing it for chance. He's not doing it because he likes to do it. You know, it's not that. He's actually done all the creation around you for you. That's how much you mean to him. That's how much important man is to God. And that's how he sees himself. That's how God Says, set it up and that's what it's been and, and we've gone over these things you know um, what happened with creation the first creation Adam is that he failed and, and, and the catastrophe that came through was that the whole creation following him was, was put down in this path of spiritual death and darkness that man man who was supposed to rule and reign has now been consumed by this nature of Satan spiritual death himself and the, the alienation, that means the separation with God came. And this condition of spiritual death was the ruling factor of their life. And so all of that, everything that around him, you know, suddenly that was made for him, started becoming a curse. Because all of that was waiting for the creation of men to grow and be in that position. Without men itself, creation will keep on failing. Without men working in the garden... You know, <clears throat> to put it this way, the garden grows grass. You know, if, if a patch of grass is left unattended, it will keep growing. It will keep growing to a place where it is unhealthy. Yet, it needs the intervention of men to grow and be tended for. That's how this whole creation was made. That it was made with men in place to be tended for. Yet, spiritual death brought in these things and... and <clears throat> All of this throughout this nation, all of the throughout this time, you know. So everyone thinks, you know, that throughout this time, because of the nature of what has come through, now people believe that God has suddenly become inactive. That now he has forgotten about his creation. He's left him to run on the rule on their own. And everything that is going wrong with, uh, wrong with the people, God is not, not God is not been, <clears throat> how we say this, God has not been affected by it. Far from the truth. Everything from the moment of man's fall, God has intricately, perfectly designed. He has been setting a plan how he can get back his creation. How he can make this creation something that is not supposed to be anymore. To be something what it was. So, so that's what it comes through. And he's been planning it all throughout ages, all throughout the times of history. From the moment Adam had fallen 
to the moment of Christ, Christ on the cross, on the resurrection. All of it reveals how perfectly God has been planning this. God has been working towards this goal. And the new goal that God is working towards is this new creation that could not be bound again back to, say, back to spiritual death. This new creation that will no longer have its hold in spiritual death. This new creation that will no longer be bound to a place where the devil can come and overtake them anymore. God is not going to just create a creation that had dominion. He's going to create a new creation that is perfectly righteous to be in a place that is absolutely Christ like the Christ Jesus and there will be no failings in them whatsoever. That's how and why we are called a new creation. In our next session when we're here, uh, we're going to talk more about it. Uh, but I, I hope you really understand, you know, the world out there is keep is trying to convince you God doesn't exist. God isn't good. God isn't working things out for you. God is not trying to make things right. No, all of that is a lie because God in truth always exists. And the word of God says, if you come to God, these are the two things that you must believe. Firstly, that he exists and that he is a reward of those who come to him. He is a rewarder. He is, a, he is in love with you intimately that he desires for you. And we take this in a manner that he is so consumed by your goodness, so consumed by the wealth being of yourself that he is willing to do everything to come to that place. That's who God really is, the creator God that exists, who always existed and always will. I hope you've learned something tonight. Let, let's pray. Let's believe God. Father, we thank you for your grace, your goodness. Thank you for this opportunity once again. Father, may our, may our minds be revealing more of who you really are. May our ears be always learning and, and seeking more knowledge of you. May our hungering hearts be always hungering for more of your goodness to be able to understand who you really are. Father, we thank you. We praise you. Thank you for your goodness and your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. I hope you really learned something tonight. Uh, do join us next, uh, next time when we're here. You really learn so much more, about the, especially about the new creation in Christ Jesus. We thank you and praise you. Jesus, and until next time, remember that Jesus Christ is Lord. Bye-bye. I hope you've been encouraged by that message. And I know maybe you've been thinking about in this house, what, who is this Jesus you've been talking about? Who is this Jesus that I, I, you want to talk about and, and say there's so many good things about? Maybe you don't know Jesus. So today I want to give you this opportunity and invite you into living your life with Jesus, to inviting to not just have Jesus, to live your life with Jesus and have Him in your life. If you want to take that step with me, I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me and I know God is going to touch your life. Say with me, Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus who died and rose up again on the third day for the forgiveness of my sins. Jesus, I make you the Lord of my life and to follow you from this day forward. Jesus, I believe in the gift of the Holy Spirit that you have to fill me and guide me all the days of my life. Father, I know that you're going to do something great in my life. And I want to receive that same Jesus you talked about today into my life. And with that, I invite you and I say thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you've prayed that prayer for the first time, you know, I want to say thank you and I want to congratulate you for and welcome you into the house of God, into the family of God. Maybe you are wanting to know more about God. You've got more information here. Contact us and we want to help you in this journey with God. Till next time, remember that Jesus Christ is Lord. Learn more from God's Word and send us your prayer request by visiting our website www.jclm.org or you can like our Facebook page Jesus Christ is Lord Ministries to keep up with the now word of the Lord for the season. Follow us on Instagram JCLM Fiji. Better still, subscribe to our YouTube channel JCLM Fiji to receive the latest teaching of God from the ministry.